You are listening to the Cigar Noise Boys. 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 I've been bad. I've been good. Dallas, Texas, Hollywood. I ain't asking for much. So who said those lyrics is what you're asking. <laughs> that is correct, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, hold on, Tyler, you go. You go first, and I go Ty- second. Tyler never gets it. Tyler doesn't listen to music. I, I listen to music all day, every day, but um, it's tough because you say it so like. Well, I try to script the cadence so it's not super obvious. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, Pulse Malone. Oh, my goodness. Okay, <laughs> next two lyrics. Should give it away. I said, Lord, take me downtown. I'm just looking for some tush. <laughs> uh, no idea. Are you, what? <laughs> Who's the rapper from Texas? He's a white guy. Riff Raff. Jody Riff Raff. Roller. Oh. No, I love yeah, that guy, I though. Paul Wall. No. Jody, Jody High Roller. Am I right? No. I, I was going <laughs> to do him one of these episodes, but uh, that is Tush by ZZ Top. Ah, okay. Classic. No one says tush anymore. Do you guys hear people say tush? Never. I want to bring that back. (laughs) Never. (laughs) It's hard to rhyme something with tush. Bush. (laughs) Bush. Smoking at Kush. (laughs) Uh, uh, What's up, everybody? Cigar Noah's boys. I'm Dom. Tyler's here looking like Elmo in a giant Nike red sweater. Dude, this this hoodie is super weird. Like, who would buy this? I only bought it because it was on clearance. (laughs) Obviously this is the weirdest looking hoodie. Looks like a I'm wearing a space helmet. Uh, yeah, it's not anyway, a uh, we're joined by Miguel Shodell of Crown Heads. Thanks for being on. Thank you guys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, looking forward to it. Never been on your guys' show before, but uh, honored to honored to be on it. Hey, not many have. It's a uh, special privilege. <laughs> and Tyler said you're into baseball. He was trying to prep me for this, but I I don't follow baseball anymore. So. That's kind of out of the Yeah, I'm, a, I'm you know, cigars are a big hobby, but it's also my career. But uh, baseball is my big hobby, is my big passion. The books I read, the, you know, stuff I collect. So that's that's what I'm into. And uh, I live in South Florida now, too. So I guess I'm in a good Nice. Nice. You're, uh, Tyler, did you, uh, did it get a little bit robotic for you on your end? Oh, I, t- I touch, but... Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll cut that out. Uh, so that leads me to my first question. How many hobbies is too many hobbies? Because I see a lot of people on Instagram posting cigars and watches, cigars and cars. I think you I can have think... two solid hobbies, and that's about it before you start watering down the others. But, yeah, what do you think? I, I think you're right. I think you have two hobbies... Any more than that, then they don't really, I think, become hobbies. They become more of a, you know, I mean, a hobby is something you're really into. Yeah. yeah. And with, with how busy you are, look, if you don't have a job and you don't have a family, you ain't got nothing, then you could probably have three or four hobbies, right? <laughs> That's fine. But maintaining being married, having kids, having a full-time career where I travel, I would say I have probably have one real, real deal hobby, and the rest is, um, you know... Hopefully, hopefully, adding travel to that as I continue to get older. I think, um, and as you like, okay, my number one hobby is cigars, but within that hobby, there's so many other hobbies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, like with cigars, I I work part time at a cigar shop. That's not a I hobby. I travel. Yeah. I tr- well, no, it's it's I do it for I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it just because okay. I love. Uh, be in there you know what i'm saying yeah um um and i do the podcast uh once every three weeks you know um i travel a lot uh you know with the cigar thing you know so within the, and I, I read a lot i listen to a million different podcasts you know cigar coop also fumar um uh, I, I even go back and listen to like Stogie Geeks all the time. And then there's a, a podcast that's super old called What Embargo. Cause I'm trying to get into Cuban. I'm smoking a Cuban tonight because I literally know nothing about Cuban. So um, I've been listening to this podcast. Is, uh, 
Seth Guys and uh, some dude named um, Fuck, I forgot his name. Something Fish. <laughs> so well, let me let me I, touch on that. Uh, I think that your hobby is absolutely cigars and everything that goes all the subcategories. Mm-hmm. I think that's one hobby. That hobby can lead you to to uh, I mean, it's like any hobby. Like I love baseball. I like going to baseball yeah. games. You can collect bobbleheads. You can collect jerseys. You can you know what I mean? There's so many subcategories. Uh, on the flip side of that, I think that if you're a well-rounded cigar guy, to understand the Nicaraguan culture of cigars, the Dominican, the Honduran, but if, you know, it's, when you if you look at wine, you know, under, loving wine, I think will take you kind of back to Bordeaux, France, right? Yeah, it all yeah. leads kind of back to that, and I think in a sense, cigars, everything will kind of lead you back to Cuba because Cuba is kind of the originator, right? That's where uh, tobacco really kind of became what we know today as a cigar, and that's the real culture. You know, people get surprised. If you go to the Dominican, a lot of guys that smoke cigars think they're just going to see people walking around smoking cigars all day. That's not the case. Dominicans, Nicaraguans, and Hondurans really don't have a cigar-smoking culture. Yeah. Um, Unless you go to those towns and the people that are smoking cigars are in the industry somehow, either cigar rollers or whatever – and, the, and Cuba has a cigar culture, although it's not as strong today as it used to. Uh, I've been to Cuba. I've been to the Habanos Festival probably about three years ago now. Nice. Um, and I think you should, uh, you, have a, you should have a good understanding of all four cigar-producing countries, their tobacco, their style. Um, so I think that's, that's good, man. That's good. You only, you only make yourself sharper and better understanding of tobacco, you know? Yep. Yeah, I went, I went to Honduras and um, – it's amazing how how different um, it was compared. To, well, I went to outside of Danley, um, uh, Julio Arroyo's factory, and uh, and his. I think he's got like seven hundred acres or something crazy. Yeah. Um, that was just totally different than just going to um, uh, Naxa, uh, Naxa in uh, Esteli. Yeah. Or you know, and then um, but like in Honduras, there was nobody was listening to music. Nobody was smoking cigars when they were rolling. Like it was really like, and I think that's a probably a product of Julio. Because I think somebody asked him, he's like, you know, they're here to work. We're not here to entertain them. You know, where I go to uh, Noxa and they're they have their iPods out. They're all smoking cigars. They're, you know, they're they're laughing. So it's just a different. And they're, um, where so, I was so so Tyler. So Tyler, you became a cigar roller. You would not go work for uh, in Honduras, Julio. No, yeah. well, I don't know. I, he doesn't listen I, to the music though, so maybe that'd be his. He'd fit I, in right there. I actually I listen to music I'm, at my job. I can listen to it a lot. So, but it's music and then podcasts and then so. But um, yeah, I would I would work in I like Esteli a lot better. I I it just I think because when I was in Honduras, it was just like it was I was there on a factory tour, so it was different than when I go to Esteli with Mo. It's kind of like we're doing our own thing, um, kind of thing, you know. So yeah. it's a little different, but um, I'm going again in March, and I'm pretty excited about it. Well, okay, um, Miguel, you said like the top four cigar produce or a tobacco it's producing spikers. countries. Does yeah. Honduras produce more than Ecuador? Would you say? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm talking cigars. I'm talking cigars. So if okay. you're talking cigars, then absolutely. As far as poundage of tobacco. That I'm not 100% sure, but Ecuador produces mainly wrapper, right? Right. Ecuadorian, some gets used in the filler or whatever, but for the most part, Ecuador is a wrapper producing country. And Honduras produces wrapper, filler, binder, and they have a cigar rolling culture there as well. So Ecuador and Honduras, very, very different. Very different. A A lot like Brazil. Brazil is a. As far as for our industry, premium cigars goes, Brazil is mostly a wrapper-producing country from Mata Norte, Mata Fina, take, um, uh, uh, Aripiraca. Um, so depending on the area, you know what I mean? But Honduras and Ecuador, Ecuador, is, uh, I would think, is a little bit bigger country. I've been to Ecuador. Um, but as far as cigars go, Honduras, Dominican, Nicaragua, and Cuba are the top four. Okay. okay. See, I thought this was kind of interesting when I was down um, – I was visiting, uh, and Miguel, you'll have to correct me how I say it. Uh, I'm probably even saying, I don't, I don't know the word, uh, Prosa Nixa, Prosa, uh, the Oliva Tobacco Group, um, the, they have their own 
so they have a part they have a stake in Naxa and then they grow a lot of their own tobacco and they're a big time broker. But the guy who runs that, um, Gustavo Cura, I was asking him about, you know, you get all this tobacco from Ecuador, you know, you get the, they grow a lot of Ecuador, Habano, Ecuador, Connecticut. And I'm just surprised there's no factories down there. You know, as much tobacco as they grow, I thought it would make sense. Why not just roll it there? Have it like a one-stop shop. And he just said, just the culture wouldn't support it or something. I, I was, I, this is something that just surprised me. A lot, a lot plays into that. A lot plays into that. Um, how much do the average worker make? You know, how much does the average worker make? Um, and you would have to literally start it from scratch. Yeah. And the, none of the Cuban families or the big Cuban families we know went to Ecuador to go. You know what I mean? A lot of them fled to the Dominican, then fled to Nicaragua and Honduras. So I think those were why those countries are a part of it. You know what I mean? Um, uh, really, before those countries, it was Cuba and Mexico, you know. Uh, so Ecuador, though, produces some incredible wrapper, uh, you know, and, and the cool thing there is you don't use cheesecloth. You know, it, it's grown directly in the sunlight. Even the Connecticut shade Ecuadorian grown stuff that's so popular. It's funny. I'll do an event. We have a cigar called Luminosa at Crown Heads, and someone will say, oh, I like sun-grown wrappers. And just to kind of, you know, just to start a conversation, technically that wrapper is a sun-grown wrapper. Because yeah, it's yeah. not grown under cheesecloth or anything because the cloud coverage in Ecuador is so heavy. So it's very much um, uh, completely different than what you would grow, let's say, in the Connecticut River Valley of the U.S. Um, but it's very interesting. I, I've, I've spent time in Ecuador. I've spent uh, time in all those countries. And... Um, the wrappers, the fields of wrapper down there is incredible. I've, I flew into Guayaquil, and from Guayaquil, you kind of go out to the fields for a couple of hours outside that city. Um, I, I think a lot of it has to do with financial, you know? The mm -hmm. cheapest country to roll a cigar in is Cuba. Um, number two is probably Honduras, and number three, Nicaragua, and the most expensive is Dominican, I think. And I've, I've been hearing uh, Robert Holt saying that it's um, one of the cigars, cloud grown, cloud grown, uh, cloud grown uh, shade or whatever, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, I know that there was a, there was an account in Louisiana who had a house uh, blend, and as a joke, they named it Moon 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 Grown Wrapper. Moon grown. It was grown in direct moonlight. <laughs> nice. Um, we get all caught up on all these terms, you know. It's it's kind of funny to not take ourselves too serious. I'm waiting for someone to come out with a. There's so many limited editions in the industry. I'm waiting for someone to come out with one cigar, like limited edition, one of one. <laughs> one of one. One of one. Uh, do you know who uh, Carlos Sanchez is? Carlos Sanchez. He owns a shop called Real Cigars. R E E L. Oh, down in Florida. Yeah, Real is yeah. in. Yeah. No, yeah. I know of him, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't call him a friend, but I do know, know of him. Uh, that dude. He's a fucking character. But I met him for the first time. Um, Last time I was down there, and uh, uh, something that Skip o Skip Martin always talks about is, is like everybody's talking about how magical a special or tobacco is, and then Carlos always says, "This tobacco isn't grown on Mars. You know, it's not. You know, you can only do so much." And he says, "You know, it's not. It's not. There's no tobacco from Mars." So yeah, I always, another... I always, I always think it's suspicious when a when a cigar maker or blender or whatever think they're the greatest thing in the world. You know what I mean? I, I always, I find that funny because there, there are guys that have been doing this in the business for longer than I've been alive. You know, I've been in this industry 17 years. Um, there are guys that have been doing it twice as long as me. And then there's guys that have been blending way longer than that. And, you know, uh, and I'm with Skip 100% on that. I, you, you work with the tobacco. A lot of the tobacco is very similar to each other, come from mm -hmm. the same growers, it's really about your fermentation. It's really about how you blend and then ultimately how you age it. And a lot of work goes into that. And, and I think uh, there's only so much you can do, right? Because it's tobacco, it's water. And then when we roll it, we use a little bit of the glue, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's really about how you, um, you know, how, what, what you decide to do with the fermentation after you get the tobacco. But, uh, you know, part of it too is marketing. You know, uh, there's a lot of guys out there. I think uh, food, cars, anything, marketing plays a lot into it. And I, I think the average cigar smoker probably doesn't want to admit to it, but 
the packaging, the band, the whole thing really kind of plays into it, you know? I'm, I'm a sucker for that stuff. Um, so on Thursday, uh, Lake Country Cigars had a, um EP Carrillo event, and he's one of your big uh, partners over at Crown Heads. Yep. Um, which I'm, I'm a fan of uh, EP Carrillo's, um, his own stuff. But it seems like the stuff he makes um, for you guys, I like a lot. Well, I, I like it more. I, w- I wouldn't say a lot more. But mm-hmm. I enjoy your stuff more than his own stuff. Is that just uh, well, uh, it's, it's John and Mike's palette, or yeah, that's John and Mike's palette. Um, you know, when you work with someone, when you work with another manufacturer, we work with Drew Estate, we work with Don Pepin Garcia, the My Father Factory, we work with Ernesto Perez Carrillo, his factories, uh, Tobacco La Alianza (TLA), uh, and we work with uh, Tobacco Letter Pichardo as well. And when you work with your partners, essentially, if you allow them to blend you a cigar, they're going to blend it towards their palate and their style, right? So you could just put an Ernie band on it, right? But ultimately, yeah. the cigar has to pass John Huber's taste test, what he likes, what he's looking for. So ultimately, our relationship with Ernie is very tight. I mean, he is, um, you know, if, if, if we were a band, he would definitely be, you know, one of the, the guitarists, right? I mean, he he plays a big part in our success and our blends of our cigars. But he knows what John's looking for. He understands John's palate, and John kind of tweaks things to, to fit his palate. So although they do come out of the same factory, um, they do represent two very different style styles of blending. And I wouldn't say one's better or worse, right? Uh, they're they're just they're different fits styles. my palate, yeah, yeah, for different palates. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of Ernie cigars. And obviously, I smoke a lot of crowned head cigars, but I can smoke my my one of my blends that he does for me, Four Kicks, Headley Grange, um, or I can pick up one of his blends, you know, and and still feel like I smoked a different cigar, even though they come from the same factory, you know. And the same thing with uh, you know Tatuaje and and my father, you know, you pick up those two cigars. To me, they're there are very very obvious differences between those blending styles of Pete. And and uh, and Johnny and 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 um, you know the whole family over there. Which so Ernesto is he's known for Sumatra rapper. He is called the Sultan of Sumatra. Okay. So he is he that is his favorite rapper, and a lot of people feel that basically what he does with with Sumatra rapper it just he constantly knocks it out the ballpark every time he he works with that rapper, and he he did that uh, our Hadley Grange. Is a cigar that he uses that Sumatra Ecuador on as well. Um, I, 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 um, oh, go on down. Yeah, just to fact check myself, I thought I read somewhere that the Headley Grange was blended to match when the levy breaks by Zeppelin. Is that true? Yeah. So it, it's when the levy breaks, the, the the beginning, the drums, very very signature kind of popular. Uh, intro to a song, right? But what was unique was that where they recorded that was in the Headley Grange um, house. And so that house has very particular acoustics. And John Huber is a big music fan. I mean, that's something that drives him. He loves music. There's music on in our office all day long. And then Ernie, uh, when his father, you know, owned La Gloria back in the day, Ernie didn't automatically follow in his footsteps of his father. Ernie wanted to become a jazz drummer in in, in New York City. So drums are very, very pop, very uh, important to him. So John and Ernie kind of bl- um, bonded over over that song, and they wanted a cigar that kind of represented that, that feel to that song, if you will, and that's Headley Grange. Nice. Um, 2019, well, 2018 was really good for you guys, but... 2019, you guys has had super awesome release after super awesome re- and, and at the shop I work at now we do we do really well with Crown Heads. Um, I actually just picked up a box of the uh, full court uh, full court press the Court Reserve. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a, it's weird because I usually prefer um, a box press, you know. But when you guys re release the uh, when you did the La Creme Bellicosa Fino. Um, I liked it better in the in that round format. And another thing is too, I don't like torpedoes, but there's something with that blend. I don't know what it is. I I really um, enjoy that. I now I don't know if if Matt missed a drop the ball on that new one you guys did the um, Chamuco. Yeah, is that still you guys still have those in stock? I do have a little bit left. 
Okay, we'll have to, I'll have to talk to Matt and see if we can get a couple of boxes. Um, because can you tell me a little bit about that cigar? Yeah, so the the Headley Grange Chamuco, last year we did the Headley Grange Black Lab. Oh, that and was the Black great Lab too. was uh, just a, a, a little different take, a Maduro take on the Headley Grange blend. This year coming around, we wanted to do it again, but we didn't want to do the same cigar. So we chose a Mexican San Andreas to go around the Headley Grange blend. Uh, it's box pressed. The foot, the wrapper goes over the foot, so as you torch it, you get a lot of the the wrapper, and that is the chamuco, twelve count box. And the chamuco is basically a, uh, a word in Mexico that that refers to a Mexican pit bull, and so the cigar is aggressive. It's it's box pressed. It's it's you know very stout, and so that we thought that was a really good name for that cigar. Um, 2018 was an amazing year. Uh, we got Company of the Year with Half Wheel. We got like small company of the year with Coop. We got um, number two cigar of the year and half wheels top twenty five list. We were number we were top. I think we were number eight on the consensus. You should have uh, been number one on half wheel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. They pick, but, they pick a look, cigar that nobody can get. Yeah, for number uh, one. <laughs> I'll leave that. And you lost that. by like decimal points. I heard by decimal uh, point. So, man. but nineteen, I thought was. Even better because we saw the release of Juarez. Oh we, man, we people go crazy of, for that. Yeah, we saw the release of a lot of limited editions that were popular. Las Calaveras this year was my favorite outside of 2014. Uh, and then La Colección, which was a huge release for us. Um, we, we got that out later in the year, you know, than we wanted to. But in a very short amount of time, La Colección has turned into a monster and we couldn't be prouder. So Regardless of the awards and the accolades, you know, they go around, people get them. We, I felt like 19 was was even better than 18. and 18, we won a ton of awards. So 2020, we got a lot to look forward to, and we're really excited at Crown Heads, man. I'm excited to see you guys do something maybe with uh, La Imperiosa because that yeah. was the first cigar I kind of fell in love with that you guys made. And it would be cool to see – um, a, a different like tweak of that, maybe maybe box press that, or maybe do something. Yeah, um, you know, Jan Jana loves that cigar. Yeah, that's a good one. Jan is a fan of that. Um, oh yeah, and then uh, June June fifteenth, Little Smoke this year. Mm. So put it on the calendar. I already uh, reached out to a couple other people. I'm trying to get uh, uh Nicholas M- um, Malilo. Uh, yeah, he went. Um, he couldn't make it last year. So I told him, like, hey, man, you got to come this year. He's like, I'll check my calendar, you know. So he's a, um, he's a good guy. He's not far away. He's only in Connecticut. You know what I mean? Yeah. It won't. He's trying not to blow you off. <laughs> yeah. So he hit him in his so DMs. Could, that's what I, that's yeah. what I did. Uh, but he, uh, um, man, he's going to be in Nicaragua for, like, I just missed him when I was there in December. He said he'll be there in, uh, when I'm in there in March because I'm going to be doing – um like a two week kind of like um, crash course kind of deal. Like almost like uh, on the job training type thing, which I'm really excited about um, with the uh, Oliva tobacco group. So sorting, um, you know, uh, going to the fields and seeing how the, the, the fermenting, the curing, the, um, wow. in the factory. Yeah. And it's cause I, you know, my buddy Mo um, brought me down there back in um, end of July, early August, and then I hit it off with Gustavo, and uh, he said he told me about this program, and he said I could stay with him because um, he's got a house down there. He's down there uh, three weeks a month, so he, you know, it's his own house he's got down there. And then when he's not there, he's in Tampa. But he said, you know, if he, you know, Kasaka stayed with him. Uh, um, Ian from Dapper will stay with them, and a lot of other people who had their, their cigars made there. Um, so he said he's got another house that is like down the street that I could stay there. That house gets busy, but I can come over for breakfast and dinner and everything. So, um, but then, um, so that'd, that'd be two weeks, and Skip said I could do a week, um, at uh, uh Nica Sueño, which would be cool too, but three weeks would be hard to get. I mean, it'd be easy to get off of Southwest. I think the people at Lake Country would kill me because uh, 
they're I'm a late night guy, you know, and then they don't when I'm not there, they close at the regular time. So the guy they're like, What the hell? You know, I wanna be here till midnight, you know. But um hmm. so I'm I'm excited about that. Um and then you're gonna be at TPE, right? End of the month? I will be at TPE. Crown Heads will be there this year. We're at TPE. Uh, we'll be at TAA, and we are at PCA. We're at all three shows this year, and yes. uh, we're excited to be at TPE. You know, nothing new to debut, but we will have some new LEs coming this p- first part of the year. Uh, but we are. We're excited about TPE. Uh, I love TAA. This year, TAA is in Mexico, and we couldn't be happier to support PCA. There's a lot of issues going on with PCA right now, but Crown Heads is a big supporter of PCA, and we're going to continue to be. Yeah, yeah, Dom, Dom, did you hear that the news about yes, uh, I did. PCA? Yeah. Um, I listened to the Cigar Authority. Uh, they did an episode yesterday. I listened to it today. And they went, um, Dave Garoppolo went in depth about his thoughts on the whole thing. And uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. I'm not going to get too much into it. But he thinks um, with, with, with them four, the main thing is – I think that the money they're putting in those four companies with PCA, PCA is not using that money to um, lobby for uh, flavored stuff, or they're not using it the money to lobby for um, online stuff. And all those companies, except for Jewish State, have their own um, cigar shops. You know what I'm saying? Casa Monte Cristo, JR, um, CI, Cigar International. Yeah. So it's like it's kind of and I, it's curious to see what companies um, it's, it's, I don't think dividing the industry right now is a, is a good thing, you know, especially if they pressure some of these smaller companies, you know, like JR has got a really good relationship with crown heads, you know, um, it just, you know, they could pressure, I'm not saying crown heads, but other companies, you know, Hey, if you keep supporting PCA, we're not going to carry your stuff. And that could be, you know, hundreds of boxes or whatever i don't know but it's just um it's sad like you know because i i'm 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 a nerd and and i look forward to the trade show every single year you know um you know that's how me and dom met we met at the roma craft party uh three two three years ago so two years ago two years ago so it's just um you the networking part and i think uh, skip posted something good about uh people who they talk about those four companies offering the deals before the trade show. And if your only reason to go to the trade show is the deals, you're it kind of in it for the wrong reasons with that. Cause it's about going to seminars, learning how to better yourself um, as a retailer, learning um, about regulation, learning about trends in the market. It's also networking, um, meeting people, learning what the ship, what, what does this shop do? that you could do, you know, what, you know, um, learning about, like when I first uh, went to the trade show, it opened my eyes and then I came back and like, I was motivated to learn as much as I could, you know? So I just, I hope a lot of retailers don't say, well, Davidoff's not there. Just, I have no reason to be there. I think there's a lot of reasons to be there. And it's not like you're spending 10, 10 K to go out there. You know, you can, it's a cheap time to fly to Vegas. First of all, no one wants to go to Vegas in the summer and, and the hotels, you can get a hotel room for 70 bucks a night. So I really don't think it's a, and you don't have to go out and spend $300 a night on dinner. So. Yeah. I think, I think look, I, I think I kind of see everyone's point of view on the big companies, you know, maybe they want more control. I can see, you know, I can see everyone's kind of side to it. I agree yeah, with yeah. you in the sense that now is probably not the time to split our industry up in different um, categories. You know, we all really should be fighting together and maybe that's what will come about after this. But I think everything is after everything is said and done, I believe the industry will continue to be strong and PCA. I think there's a lot of strong leaders over there and, and hopefully the best is yet to come for our industry, man. I know, you know, there's, there's a lot of regulation and issues. Um, and, Oh, robot. Uh, Miguel, you kind of went transformer on us for a second. Uh, oh, you there? Yeah, you uh, Can you hear me? You were a robot for a second. Um, All right. You froze that up you, there. Um, that was me? That was you. Dude, that I'm, was not even, you. I'm not even on my lounge Wi-Fi. I'm at home right now. 
Well, what I was going to say was that if people can't see the video, Dom, you are holding the microphone like you're about to drop the illest mixtape <laughs> I've ever seen. Appreciate I mean, that. the way you're holding the mic, I bet you you hold the gun like this too, right to the side. Always sideways. Look at this, man. That's, that's the way to do it. <laughs> no, because I bought this mic actually has a little stand, but it's like yeah. a, a desktop stand. I don't have any okay. of those new fancy fandangled ones with like the crane on it, but got like a boom assistant over there holding the microphone above you yeah we don't have the uh the money for that yet <clears throat> um yeah, i don't have sponsors miguel no i'm just kidding no i, I, Spy, I hey, look keep doing it you'll get sponsors i don't know if this was the <laughs> end if you were uh continuing on because you cut out or i guess i cut out for a bit um but i wasn't sure you said you had some le's coming out is it going to be at tpe when you come out with those le's or just early in the year no, no, no. We're early in the year, I think we'll probably start announcing stuff, uh, some stuff after TPE. Um, obviously, towards the end of the year, we did Juarez and we did La Colección, so those are still fresh. So that's going to be a big part of what we'll be talking about at TPE. But come, you know, um, come February, come March, we've got a lot of things uh, to to look forward to, and we're excited. Um, I've seen a lot of the stuff that we're working on, and. Man, I'm, I'm, I just, I love getting out there. I love shaking people's hands, but I love getting these cigars and people's, you know, look, I'm a cigar geek too. I have the cigars that I smoke on an everyday basis for kicks, Lake Carême, um, La Colección, but I also like to mix in limited edition stuff. So, you know, either have been Black Lab last year or Chamuco this year, CHC Reserve, Full Court Press. I like mixing in stuff like that. I think it keeps your palate fresh. To me, I'm a geek. I love it. To me, it's exciting. Uh, and and it, it, it could be that way towards any company. You know, Skip, I really love a lot of Skip's core stuff. But, you know, I like some of his limited edition stuff, too. And uh, that always kind of makes it fun, I think, you know? Yeah. I think it's it, you guys have a good um, a good mix of it, too. You know, I think there's some brands who um, their core line doesn't sell at all, you know, and then their LEs were um, – super hot and then they kind of sold down i think you guys have a good mix where i think um you know with the four kicks the, the four kicks from daryl the jericho hill Imperioso, you have a lot of really good core stuff and then the, i think it's a good um mix in some, the le that, that's the way to do it and especially like you know i'm next level nerd with that shit where it's like i like to see what it does to do a rapper switch, you know, what it's like to um, box press something or, yeah. you know, make a new size of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the, that Lomperios or the uh, uh, Luminosa. I like that six by 60 size, um, you know, yeah. cause that's what Ernie's known for. Six, you know, he's a big ring gauge guy. And uh, that's that, the more... fun, right? Headley Grange. We love Headley Grange. Well, we're not going to do a full line of, you know, Mexican San Andres, but hey, let's do a limited run- runoff. Let's just do, you know, 1,500 boxes. Let's check it out. Let's see how it goes. And that's part of the fun. I mean, that's part of the fun of the industry. And when you get to do that stuff, you can't do the LE stuff if you're not, if your core stuff isn't supporting you. You know what I mean? And so we've been yeah. very blessed all the way around. So we're, we're pretty lucky. Um. How long has San Andreas been this popular for? Is this something that's been around for a while? I think San Andreas has always been there, but it's been marketed as a different wrapper for some time. I think there's certain companies that have used it and don't admit to using it. Um, the drill? You know, back, huh? <laughs> I, I cannot. I have no comment. I have no comment. <laughs> um, a lot of people use Mexican San Andreas, and through the years, they've either caught it a different wrapper or whatever it is, but. I remember that it was kind of Mexican cigars were kind of out of vogue again. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah, Tayama was out. There weren't a lot of people smoking Mexican stuff. But I remember specifically um, Eric Espinosa coming out with the very first Murcielago. Mm. Um, by now, I think he's done like three different or four different versions now. I mean, it's gone through several different factories, different packaging changes. And I'm a big fan of Espinosa, but. I remember when that cigar, the original one, came out, uh, and he was touting the fact that he was using Mexican San Andreas, which was not the popular thing to do. And so he was doing that, and then it just seemed like everybody else started saying, "All right, let's talk about it." Let's. And I, look, I remember back in the day, man, people were like, "Oh, I don't want Mexican tobacco," and 
say, listen, man, you know, you may not like a Mexican Puro, but the Mexican rapper, San Andreas, is beautiful. And people always think of it as a Maduro, but you can also get Mexican San Andreas and in, in not necessarily a natural shade, but like a Colorado shade. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of different ways you can use San Andreas. And and um, I'm so happy to see it at the stage it is right now because it's a beautiful wrapper and people are talking about it. People are admitting to using it. And, and now we kind of tout it. So it's one of those rappers that has always been around and people weren't really keen about bragging about it. And now they are. So, uh, you know, I'm Mexican descent. So uh, that's a special place in my heart for Mexican San Andreas. Um, yeah, cause I think Kristoff, the pissed off Kristoff, they that's that's marketed as just a San Andreas, not a Maduro. It looks a little, it looks pretty dark, but they say it's. I'm trying to think. I know, like some of the Tatawais, like the TAA, that didn't look super. That looked like that Colorado shade you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, but um, Mexican San Andreas comes in several different shades. I mean, not just Maduro. It's amazing too how much uh, just a different like. Uh, we were playing around with um, a cigar for our uh, our shop, um, and uh, we were going to go with a Ecuadorian um, Sumatra uh, um, Rosado. And I said, "Let's let's try it on. Let's try this. You know, buns. Really, the cigar is really good. Let's try it with um, uh, a little darker. And we want the um, Oscuro and and." Uh, we brought it back here to the shop, and everybody likes that um, a squirrel one better. So, just amazing, just how. Did you within within a wrapper it changes? Did you yeah bring the different blends with the different wrappers to the shop and had the shop uh, patrons try each one, or just you decided on the squirrel? Uh, we had um, um, like probably ten different people try it. Okay, and everyone but like one or two like the uh squirrel one better so that's a cool thing to do yeah it's uh hopefully we're, we're trying to get the pricing down you know we don't want we're looking at a certain price so it's got a connecticut broadleaf binder so Ooh. we'll we'll see what the price point on that is you know i mean it's not you still you, you know i know there's a broadleaf shortage but i think that's like uh wrapper grade you know so I think yeah it's wrapper wrapper grade right now broadleaf is what's in short supply very short supply yeah, yeah. so um what's the oh great i'm gonna butcher it miguel the uh coalition. La, coalition. la coalition that's broadleaf right that is Broadleaf. That's coming from Drew Estate. Uh, Willie Herrera blended that with John Huber, but we are using their Broadleaf. Um, yeah. I can tell you that you know it's very hard for us to get a hold of Broadleaf, very hard for most cigar makers um, and cigar manufacturers to get Broadleaf right now. But luckily, Drew Estate has a lot of it. They have a lot of stock of tobacco, and they were more than gracious enough to offer it to us. And you know, you got to jump on that opportunity, you know? Yeah, I thought that um that Buckeye blend was really good. We were able to smoke that. You gave me a sample fresh off the the truck. Um, we, we did that event at my old shop. Uh, yeah, and the, people love that cigar. We we so we ordered uh, quite a bit of it during that Lawless Day, which is a really cool concept. Six by forty eight, um, man. That's a great size. Dom, have you smoked that? The La Co- Coalition? No, the uh, Buckeye Land. I have not. No. Buckeye Land is uh, the first cigar Drew Estate did for us. Um, six by 48, beautiful cigar. We made it for Ohio. And then one day out of the year, we do a thing called Lawless Day where all of our accounts, you know, can order Tennessee Wall, Chiller Rosa, Texas, and, and Buckeye Land. Yeah. Miguel, uh, Dom doesn't smoke cigars. Um, <laughs> we're trying, we're it's trying the to hobby get I'm, him. I'm trying to get into. No, nah, he lives in California and uh, – they make it damn near impossible to smoke there. Where in California do you live, man? Uh, Bay Area, essentially. Fremont. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm trying to fire up this uh, La Colchion, but uh, it's so cold in my car that I can't get any, any lighter to work. <laughs> well, your light went out. I was wondering if your uh, car battery died and you'd just be freezing there in an ice Yeah, box. I got to work at I gotta work at 4 a.m., so hopefully it starts when I have to wake <laughs> up this morning. Oh my God! Just ride a bike. Flick a big man. They always work. Oh, yeah, it's what's working. I got one. That's good stuff. 
Uh, real quick, shout out to Cigar Noise. Uh, check out the website and the app if you want to post pictures. Talk about cigars. Good group of guys there. Um, but since Tyler's taking a break from his monologuing to uh, relight a cigar, I want to talk about bathrooms um, and lounges. Do you guys see any weird, crazy stuff? Well, I know Tyler is at the one lounge, but Miguel, you probably, uh, you've been around. Are there any weird uh, cigar lounge bathroom items or posters that you've seen that kind of left impression on you? Yeah, in fact, uh, there's one in uh, Wisconsin that has a bunch of posters of women pointing and laughing. <laughs> what? That's yeah. Where is that? Nice ash. Oh, I haven't been there in years. I went there once with my dad, and I didn't have my ID, and they kicked me out. I'm like, okay. I haven't been there in years, though. i got to check it out. Yeah, and what else have I seen? Uh, I've seen, uh, you know, when I worked at Torano, uh, Jack Torano and I, Jack came up with an idea to do a lineup of the Torano cigars all in different Vitolas, and it says size matters. So a lot of people put that one in their bathroom. Yep, we had that uh, Lake Country. Yeah, and... Um, Man, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of stuff. I've I've seen stores that, you know, uh, uh, there's there's I've seen stores where the bathroom is absolutely scary to walk into. I've been to cigar shops where they're beautiful and clean and gleaming, you know, and and that have cigar ashtrays everywhere in the bathroom. And uh, I've seen a lot of stuff, but I'll say that um, uh, they're not always the cleanest bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> what well, I, I tried if, if you go on sorry i go was on. trying to get uh other people or f- listeners or whatever to uh pitch in um because one of the lounges near me has this it's by archetype the uh sacred scales oh the the glowing uh wolf neon yeah and it has i don't want to take a picture because it looks two-dimensional if i took a picture it's this three-dimensional wolf coming out of the wall. They put that right over the toilet. So if you're taking a piss, it's just like right in your face. Uh, yeah, not necessarily good for branding. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty funny. I've seen that in uh, humidors, and it's a it's a cool display piece, really cool display piece. Yeah. Uh, then this the other lounge near me has like – looks like a birdhouse, but uh, it has a little sign that says quality cigars. That was well – there you go. You guys could create a new Instagram handle called Cigar Lounge Bathrooms. Yeah, I was I was hoping that Tyler would get some DMs of dudes taking a crap, taking a selfie on the toilet, but that I don't think that happened. At least Tyler, you haven't told me it happened. Did you get no, it? not yet. No, because uh, Mukau no. Mukau Rich asked, uh, "How many bathroom picks do you look at each day?" I don't look at any. This is just a topic idea that kind of went to the crapper <laughs> my um, biggest thing with um cigar shop bathrooms is the amount of guys who don't lock the door what yeah like, I don't, yeah i don't care if you're just taking a leak it's a welcoming environment lock the door and it's like and then when i walk in like you're mad at me bro you're the one who didn't lock the door you know and it's like i always, i got this image of this guy at the shop taking this big shit up and i walk over i'm like come on bro come Seriously? You're such a millennial. And I know, but it's like it's burned, <laughs> in, it's burned into my, my yeah. retina. No, no, look, 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 it happens all look, it happens all the time, right? Um Is it laziness you're, you're or what? Geek. You guys have a, a woman and a male's bathroom. Um, a, a man and woman's bathroom. And, yeah, and, but I use the the women's only. Oh. You're disgusting. For uh I don't well. <laughs> It's a lot cleaner because <laughs> I'll tell you this, uh, we have now Not we for have, them. <laughs> we have op- we've got Tyler to open up. He's, he's 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 opening up to us. I'm very woke. It's well, next, 2020. He's very time, woke. Next time you walk in on somebody and you go back out, just put take your sock off, put it on the door handle. There you go. I'm going to open the door and just start cheering or something. It's like it's just weird how they flip it on you and act like you're the one who did something wrong. It's like, nobody, you're the one who didn't lock it. Like, I'm paranoid. I double, I double check that shit. You know, I double check the, the lock. Like, I'll lock it, turn it, watch the lock pop out, and then I'll lock it again. Oh my what? God. Like, <laughs> do you take I'm the little, depths. 
take a little nice stand and put it in front of the door. Yeah, I, I, I keep a cane, you know, and I, I don't know. If it's, I don't know, man. It's just like, I, God, feel, like, locked, I feel like the walls the are coming down. I feel like Tyler is opening up and he's, he's sharing, this is you good. know. Therapeutic. So when you're down there at the factory, man, make sure you lock those doors. Yeah, well, there. Um, I'll tell you what, though, it's it's always nerve wracking down there because the water comes up before it go, and then it goes down. So you're like, <laughs> did, did I just fucking clog this fucker? You know, and you're like, that's embarrassing. But then it comes down, you know. And I remember when I was down in Honduras. You're like, all right, guys, in the states, you guys use four inch tubing. Here they use two inch tubing. Oh, so it's when you take a number two and you're done with your business, flush, and then when you're wiping, then you flush again. Don't don't let it all accumulate. Now, that's and too you much probably, information. Tyler, you look like a guy who takes baby poops anyway, man. You have to worry uh, about that. I, <laughs> this, <laughs> well, I don't even know what that means. This is the greatest this is the greatest podcast was, I've ever been on in my life. <laughs> my uh college best friend would always be like you take baby poops, and we just like yelled that at me in public, and everyone's just like, "What? What's going on here?" Um, speaking of water coming up, is America backwards <laughs> because we don't use bidets? Like I've, I haven't used one. I, I have want friends to, that have bidets in their houses. I want to get one that like connects to uh, your toilet, but I, my grandparents had one growing up. I thought it was just like where girls piss. I thought it was like a separate <laughs> unit, but um, I don't know. I feel like it makes sense. Everything I've heard of it, it's more sanitary and it's less expensive. Dude, you're throwing down like $30 a month on Charmin Ultra Plush and clogs the toilets. Come on. Well, I will tell you, I, I, I have some friends that have bidets and they swear by them. Uh, I've stayed in some old uh, crown plazas across the country that have, still have some bidets in them. Uh, I myself am not a big bidet guy, but uh, uh, nowadays with wipes and things like that, I don't really think you need a bidet. Okay. Well, my my deal with wipes is half of them you can't flush, right? Like they'll say non-flushable on there. <laughs> so it's well, like you just <laughs> regardless, you flush it anyways. Break a law, man. Break a rule. I'm just saying that's when you know I have anxiety problems, and then if I'm clogging a toilet with Baby wipes, you know. Hey, and and it's like I don't want you guys are gonna have you guys are gonna win podcast awards. I'm telling you, I can already tell. Um, in college, we uh, so I was in a fraternity house. We had ten guys there, and it was this huge mystery because somebody would wipe and then throw their crap towel or whatever in the trash can right next to the toilet. And we throw oh. parties, and these, you know, girls are just like, "What's going on in your house?" <laughs> and I, I can't remember if we figured it out. It might, might be one of my housemates now. I don't know, but that was a dark time. Wow. Made it through the dark ages, dark, though. Dark times, very dark. We need to do an undercover sting operation. Put a what, like put a camera in the bathroom. <laughs> We're not that type of fraternity. I was gonna say you bound to catch a couple of cases, man. California fraternity. Did you go to Stanford with that? No, I'm sorry. I'm... Detective I'm sorry. Tyler. Oh. Uh, so, V cut everything actually prompted our analogy. So, Miguel, I like to make analogies for cigars. Okay. Um, and V cut everything gave us this one today. So, if chicken was a cigar, what cigar would chicken be? Well, do a little psychology. Chicken, everyone likes chicken. Chicken is very not offensive. <laughs> well, yes and no. Okay, while you're thinking, I'll give you some time to think. I saw so my middle school teacher, and uh, a lot of my students are uh, Indian and they're vegetarian. I had a mm. six, or no, he's a seventh grader, and he asked me what chicken tasted like, and I was it was just so sad because I I can't explain it you compare things to chicken that's mm. it was just tough well um have you ever had paneer no that's uh cheese from india Maybe that's I... some good stuff you don't need chicken if you got paneer let me tell you that's how good paneer <laughs> is 
paneer is real damn good. I, mean, lo- um, I think many cigars can be chicken because chicken is very non-offensive and it's just a really good every day. You can fry it. It's like shrimp, like Bubba, Sh- Bub- like Bubba Gump says. You can fry it. You can, <laughs> you can you can grill it. You can roast it, toast it. You can do everything <laughs> with chicken, man. So I think any cigar that is smooth, medium-bodied, easy going on the palate can be chicken. Nice. Tyler? Um, Tyler's still thinking about wipes. <laughs> no, I, I was actually thinking about... Um, the anxiety of what the bathrooms are going to look like in Nicaragua when he's down there for two weeks. Yeah, uh, I was thinking... I was, chicken. I was thinking about getting... Um, I haven't had chicken wings in a while. And I'm like, damn, those sound good. There you and, go. Um, Do get an air fryer. Chicken, chicken, chicken. I just bought a, a beef jerky uh, dehydrator. Nice. And uh, I made some beef jerky with some Nicaraguan hot sauce. Let's it turned go, out really good. Let's go hunting. Let's go get some elk. Elk. I was I was just I just did an event on Thursday night at Robusto and Briar in Lakewood, Ohio, up near Cleveland. I just heard and about that place. Great, great lounge. Wonderful cigar shop. Patrick, the owner, is wonderful. But as we're doing the cigar event. Uh, one of the, you know, the conversations can just go anywhere in a cigar shop. One of the conversations was who makes the best air fryer. And it's funny, Dom, you, you mentioned air fryer because that was one of the conversations that we had was who makes the best. And what it came down to was Phillips. Phillips <laughs> makes the best air fryer. I don't know if that's true. I don't have one, but I will be getting an air fryer very soon. How do these people buy multiple air fryers to test them out? A couple of the people that I know have had several because they've broken them or they had them for so long and they're worn out. And that after using several brands, they're very happy with one particular brand (laughs) over the other. Hey, Tyler, you might want to crack a window there, man. You're hotboxing that. I know. I need to open my door, man. I don't know if you've seen I don't know if you've seen the movie uh, Up in Smoke. (laughs) That's what Tyler looks like. Right. Tyler, call the ambulance, man. Your car is on fire. Put on some lasers, yeah, my, play some EDM. I can't see the my screen anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty bad in here. On. It's oh man, it's bad in here. Um, I should get an air fryer. Um, I I've never sous vide anything, and Skip is always talking about that. Speaking of cooking, I want to try uh, sous vide uh, doing that. So. If you, um, sous-vide, if you sous-vide a steak, it's going to look absolutely terrible after it comes out of the bath. But mm-hmm. that's why you finish it on the grill. Yeah. Miguel, man, I cannot wait. I am, uh, I'm going to be buying a, um, a duplex in uh, this summer. And uh, I'm excited that I'm going to be able to grill. I live in an apartment. It's impossible to grill. It's a big fucking to-do. I got to go to my garage, which isn't attached to my apartment. Uh, I'm going to have... Right now, I have eight humidors, you know, like coolers, tubs, humidors, blah, blah. You know, I can't find anything. So I'm either going to do a little walk-in converter closet or get, like, two big cabinets. And uh, I'm excited about that. And I'm excited about actually having, like, a place to do a podcast at that's not in my car. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to get some vents in the in the basement. Um, I don't know what I'd do with anything, but... So um, the future... You could be, it could be like recorded in front of a live studio audience. Yeah, it'd be my cat and me or something like, you know. <laughs> and when he says his cat, he's talking about a real cat, not like your boy. That's my yeah, cat. my boy. Um, boy. Well, we got to figure out how to do video someday, yeah. Yeah, cause, well, I paid for, I think, a year of whatever I'm using to record this, and it doesn't support any visuals, so... We'll Coop, you guys got to reach out to Coop or, or Bear. Yeah, we should just ask around. Because I know uh, well, the one and only Rebar, they do video. I've been on their show once. Yeah, we're going to talk to... I've been on you know all these shows, and uh, most of them are, are, are video. But do we, do we want... Do you want to be on video? Tyler, do you want to be on What's video? Up? With your Elmo um, outfit? You're going to have to think about what you're wearing before you're on a podcast if it's video. Bro, now that I lost this weight, I have so much more uh, cooler clothes, man. I, I'm, I want to show it off. I want to take more pictures of myself. I'm wearing cool clothes for once. I personally think this is what should happen. And your basement of the duplex, Tyler, 
Mm-hmm. I think you set up a little setup like um, like a Jay Leno or a, or a David Letterman, right? You have a desk and then you have some chairs and you do it like that. And then Dom, there's be a screen behind him and you're being live fed into it. So you're like, you're there on a screen. Green screen me green in. Screen. Green screen him in and you could do a whole show like that. Cigar hey. boys noise. Noise boys, boys noise. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> oh, man. And then you can have a live studio audience. Like you have like Jana or somebody over there playing the triangle, you know? We'll, Matt. We'll hire a cigar babe to do our prompts. Cutting lights with a cigar babe. There you go. I, you know what I miss uh, ever since Coop lot, uh, left uh, Stogie Geeks, man. I love that format of uh, they review and they talk about cigars they smoke during the week because part of my New Year's resolution is I'm, I'm writing down every fucking cigar I smoke and all the information, factory, wrapper, binder, filler, my very basic tasting notes and uh, like uh, performance, all that. So I'm up to about what's it the eleventh or twelfth today? I've um I think I've smoked thirty cigars this year, which is a lot less. When I was working at the other shop, I was doing that full time. I was smoking fifty a week, you know. Now I'm doing like thirty in two weeks. Wow! So um, right. you're letting yourself go now. I know. Well, I'm saving money. I'm saving money on food and cigar. Well, actually. My cigar, I just keep adding to my collection now at this point. But just um, send me to your trunks, I'll take them. Send you what? Cool, Coolidors. <laughs> yeah, I'll send them all to you. No, I still need to. I still need to do that this year. Um, Packers are up twenty-eight ten. Mm. In the third quarter. Third quarter. Yeah, Dom was so worried. He's like, I'm gonna miss the football game. It's like, Dom, the Cowboys aren't in it. So what do yeah. you care? Yeah, yeah, but I mean that game earlier today. I don't know if you guys watched it. The Texans and Chiefs. Mm-mm. Oh, it was a good game. It looked lopsided, then it completely flipped after the first quarter. Who yeah, won that game? Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Texans were up 24-0, 24-0? I think 21-0. In the first quarter, and Chiefs <laughs> outscored them 51-3 to the rest of the game. Oh. 50, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we thank you for coming in. Uh, I'm a guy on a Sunday night. I know it's uh, you travel a lot, and Sundays are a lot of family days, you know. So, well, appreciate um, uh, appreciate you guys having me on, man. I hope you guys keep rocking and rolling. Uh, if there's anything I could do for you guys in the future, let me know. Uh, you know, like uh, you know, you guys are doing your thing, man. Let's uh, let's keep pumping the industry. Let's make sure this industry is around for a long, long time. Uh, if anyone wants to follow me, they can follow me on Instagram or Twitter. It's M I G S C H one nine eight zero. Appreciate you guys' support. Uh, check out crownheads.com and appreciate your boy smoking, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, well, we're not cut, we're not cutting you off quite yet. I'm just, oh, <laughs> but we'll do that. We'll, we'll... He was trying to leave, and you're holding him in here now. No, I, I told you an hour, and it's been uh, uh But I just wanted to say because we have. Miguel, we haven't even touched base on, on you know on some of the conversations we've had about you've been in here for 17 years. You started, you know, I would love to get in, next time you're on if you would be so kind to come back on. I'd love to get a little more into your backstory, a little bit about your CAO days and how you got on, and then yeah, Tarano and, and Duran and and I I just um I don't know if Dom had any more questions, but. I'll never forget when you did that Duran event at Uly's, man. And um, I was just getting into cigars. Or I was, I've been smoking a while, but um, I've had some bad experience with reps, you know, talking to them. I had uh, one guy just completely blow me off and that kind of sour, you know. And then I, I met you and then we hung out. And then um, it was a weird night. It was like a Tuesday night, I think. Yeah. We were like able a, to, yeah. So we were able to ch- uh, chat a lot and you were. Um, super nice and and uh and ever since then i you know i go to you with any questions and I've, I've always looked at you you and my boy uh brent ab brennan as like two of my um uh, mentors even though i don't i haven't i talked to brennan a couple months ago he's not in the industry anymore but um uh, i appreciate the all the advice and everything you know and 
we were able to hang out at the trade show, get away from the crowds. And it was, uh, you introduced me to Mike Moreland. Yeah. Me and Mike, we talk on uh, a couple times uh, a month on, you know, we'll text each other. And, and I, I went and visited his shop. He's a, he's an interesting character, you know. The music is swelling right now, Tyler. You're really, uh, <laughs> oh, thanks. really buttering them up. No, no I, 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 I appreciate it, man. I remember, I remember you meeting Tyler early on. Yeah, you, uh, you were, you were a guy that was very interested, asked a lot of, uh, you know, questions. And so, to me, I, you know, I take that as someone who's very interested. So I, I will spend my time. I will spend, you know, that extra time to really get to know a consumer if they seem that they're really interested in the industry. And so, look, you know, I, I've been working in 17 years, but you know, 10 years before that, I was the cigar geek. I went to cigar events. I went to cigar shops and there were guys that wouldn't pay me any mind, wouldn't talk to me. And then there were guys that would take the time and talk to me. And I always remember how that felt. So I try to reciprocate that um, because, you know, this industry is about sharing and about building, building relationships. Right. So to me, that's very important. And, and I think overall events, tastings, hanging out in the shop, whatever it is, it's a great opportunity to meet other people of different walks of life and I think that really opens you up and, and you get to know some really great people. You know, we had a good time in Vegas. You and I were sitting uh, at the the rum bar having a cigar and just, you know, kicking back, relaxing after a long day. Uh, those things are enjoyable. And, and Dom, hopefully you and I will be able to sit back, have a cigar together and and bond and, and uh, you know, embrace each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, take it easy, Embrace man. the bait. Hey. Um, but no, yeah, definitely. If we, uh, if I see you at PCA this year or, uh, next time, if we get you on the show, uh, Absolutely. I would like to pick your brain. Cause my goal by 2030, I want to have a cigar, even if it's like, uh, yeah. like 500 cigars, I want to yeah. build something. So 10 year yeah. goal, trying to learn as much as I can. That's the name of the game man. just absorb it, have fun talk to people and just stack all that information and you'll meet great people. You'll meet some assholes, but at the end of the day, really link up with the people that care and keep building that passion for the industry. And through this podcast, through Instagram, through social media, we're able to continue to pump the industry and have it around for a long, long time, man. That's the name of the game. Yeah. Yep. So and if Tyler, got- Tyler doesn't yeah. burn up in his car with all that smoke, <laughs> He'll be around for a long, long time. Dude, I'm, I'm, it's funny because the, the old shop I worked at, the smoke was um, was this bad sitting in there. So I'm, I've gotten really used to it, you know. Um, but it's really bad in here. <laughs> but, you know. You need a squeegee uh, for your glasses, man. I know. But this uh, um, La Coalition. La Coalition. Give up. Stop smoking cigars. La Coalition. Cole. Read the letters. Coalition. 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 <laughs> it's really good, man. You guys Thank did a really good job with that. I'm smoking the Petite Corona, Petite Robusto. Corona, Corona Gorda. Oh, there's Gordito, Corona which Gorda. is the Robusto, but there's the Corona Gorda. Uh, yeah, man. Drew State, Willie Herrera, John Huber. They really did a hell of a job on that cigar. Uh, we're, we're, we're so happy to have it out there, man, and, and doing well. Yeah, I got this from a uh, small batch. Um, well, we carry at the shop, but I'm part of the small batch cigar of the month club. Yeah, and they sent us uh, set one of these out. So beautiful. I don't. Well, I don't want to keep on adding the conversation, but um, that was the blind review this last week. Um, oh, I, I haven't. I, yeah, check it out. I, I gave that a, a five pack recommendation. It was a good smoke. I like the the Thank smoke you. output is insane, which I would have. Yeah, you should have known that, Tyler. In your car? No, I've smoked it before. I'm a, I'm a okay. big fan of it, you know. No, it, it does. It gives off a lot of smoke um, and and really enjoyable. Really enjoyable. Yeah. I'll have to read that review. Those bond reviews are pretty interesting. Now, I, I don't know if you listen to Salt and the Smoke. They roasted me. Talking. They tore me apart. Yeah, because you're the weird reviewer. Because, okay, <laughs> well, you... I don't uh, give many box recommendations, but I've never bought a box. I, I have a small humidor and then just a Boveda ba- bag. So if it's going to be box worthy, it has to be like a 10 out of 10 for me. That's yeah, I've defense. seen Dom at the trade show say, hey, I can't I can't take these cigars. They got no place to put them. Oh, so what? he's yeah, he's uh... I'm going to mute you now. <laughs> now you just go out and buy as many coolers as you can, man. Yeah, for reals. Yes. 
so for for Dom uh, Miguel, a five pack is like that's basically like buying five boxes, you know, because this humidor holds twenty. You got a travel humidor and a a desktop, right? Five pack. If I like a cigar, I buy a five pack. So I think that there would be like five of Dom's heads, like you know what I mean, like five <laughs> out of five Dom's, five five out of five beard bearded Dom. There you go. That's I take that as high praise. All right, Miguel, have you seen our um our little uh um logo for the podcast? I have. It's pretty funny, isn't it, with Dom and those big ass glasses? I think it's I think it's one of a kind. <laughs> <laughs> dude so i mentioned the story before we had the guy who kind of did the logo on and um and shout out to sean <laughs> run to smoke yeah sean's a great guy man one of the nicest nicest dude I, can't, I i hopefully i can meet him someday he's up in canada but uh dom's like yeah sean needs some pictures of you i'm like <laughs> okay and he's like we need it against uh um a white wall or whatever so i'm just like <laughs> you need different angles that was so awkward just taking like, like 15 30 pictures. pictures of your face well hey sean worked magic man we gotta have him updated my face is i lost like 10 pounds on my face so we gotta we gotta get that updated yeah, and i got new glasses too i'll add more beard before i shave it yeah there you go i i yeah. think that yeah tyler you really you gotta get this one updated <laughs> you got to get this updated because you, and then you've got the Dom, you have the uh, macho man, Randy Savage glass. Oh yes, I do. Uh, and then Tyler, you've lost quite a bit of weight in the face. This is kind of Peter Griffin right here. <laughs> it's, not, so, it's not very flattering. No, none of those two are flattering. So we need, we need to re up those. Oh, I'm, I'm keeping I, the macho man, Randy Savage shades though. You have that's to. Like, that's, that's part my, of your review. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay, I like it. I like it. I like it's it. Style points. I'll wear a, a Juarez hat. There you go. That, uh, I like it. Perfect. Hats finally be now. I, I wear my foundation one a lot, but that Juarez one I like a lot too. I just snuck in the bathroom here. Picture, yeah, the sacred scales. That's kind of interesting. Yep. And then there, uh, there's a. Oh my God! You people need to follow your Instagram. Cigar noise, boy, O I S. <laughs> what do you think of the spelling this, of that? If you're not following this Instagram, you ain't in the game. Yeah. Before well, we, last hey. thing, last thing, because we we do have to kind of wrap it up. Uh, have you ever heard of or seen anybody post anything boys B O I S before? I never have in my life. Okay. Oh my lord! Better than better than uh, what Skip Martin thought. Uh, Skip. Well, the first of all, the first thing you type in when you type in boys on um, Safari, it shows up as, what is it, Dom? We look it up. Yeah, you look at, like, I, uh, I've never heard of this before. So this is just your Well, Skip's like, mind. you guys should, you guys need to start um, um, back checking your shit uh, because the Urban Dictionary is, uh, boys is slang within the LGBT and butch and femme communities for a person's sexual or gender identities. In some lesbian communities, there is an increasing acceptance of variant gender expression, as well as allowing people to identify as boy, B-O-I. So uh, Skip roasted us on, on my Facebook, and then I deleted the post. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, if you guys are my boy, I guess, then. You guys are my boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's from a meme. Well, I just said, hey, at, at what point do we become just Cigar Noise podcast? You know, when do we grow up from the, you know, I, I'm, I'm 31 now, Dom. What you're, about you're this? What, your... if, what if it's Man. Cigar Noise, boys, B-O-I-S, to men's? <laughs> men's. <Ooh. laughs> we actually, we talked about doing boys to men. Boys to men's with a Z. Uh and it's it's this mouthful. Um, <laughs> what, <laughs> the name will be like, like ten long, ten words long. Well, then it, what would it break down to? Uh, C and B to M. I don't know. But um, my favorite was be so horny. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was 
when I was down in Austin, I was telling Skip about that, and Skip fucking loved it. He's like, we're putting it on a T-shirt. And then I'm like, uh, I'm like, dude, that's my thing. He's like, well, I'm stealing it. And then I called him a cigar company I won't mention for stealing ideas. And then he said something about uh, get out of here or something. <laughs> but uh, and then they He's had the so Tuesday, oh, yeah, they had the Tuesday night cigar club on. And they claimed that they came out with that idea four years ago. And I I felt crushed. Like, be so horny, I thought that was my thing. And they're saying they came up with that four years ago. Which I have to go and listen to their podcast they did. They said where they came up with that idea. But, um, like, I'd be honored if Skip made a shirt that said be so horny. And then Moo Cow Rich told me that uh, I could use, um, uh, what the fuck was it? Uh, Lajero... Oh, shit. Um, I know he's all about uh, the uh, Corojos. It was something... Uh, oh, pull my Lajero. Pull my Lajero. Pull my Lajero. Oh, oh yeah. Pull, there you go. Pull my hair. Pull my hair. Pull my Lajero. Which, that doesn't, that's, not, that's not as uh, cool as Be So Horny, but... When I came up with that, I had like I was on two hours of sleep and I was laying in bed trying. I had to be up at four a.m. It was like two a.m. and we were just going back and forth with these ideas, and that just popped in my head. And then somebody fucking already took it. I think, hey, uh, Dom, when when Tyler Jeffrey on his gravestone, it'll say the man who invented V so horny. Yeah, no one's gonna try to take that away from you. That yeah, point. that's Wikipedia right there, man. That's your biography. Yeah, well, you hey, be so horny, boys. <laughs> be so horny, boys. <laughs> no, right. That'll never work. I do not want to well, be known as that. Don, where is me so? Where's me so horny from? Let's see if Don knows this, Miguel. I don't know where Misa. it's from. I just know it's like an Asian girl type thing where we say me so horny. You don't know where it's from, though. Is it, Two is it... live crew. No, Miguel, wrong. It's from Full Metal Jacket. Yeah, but it got popularized uh, in that song, yeah. But by Full Luke Metal Campbell. Jacket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um Ah oh, man, he's so horny, man. I gotta come up with my own podcast. But going back to Good. Get out of here. Going back to <laughs> I don't <laughs> want a podcast with you anymore. Damn. You just know going too much about cigars. I just want to talk about toilets. No, I don't. Uh going back to Stogie Geeks though, the the, the Stogies of the Week, bro. I, I wanted to do that, but you know, not copy them completely. Just talk about cigars, but I'd have I'd have twenty to talk about, and you have one, so it, it wouldn't work very well. You know, I, I do most of the talking like I do anyways. Yeah, I'll, I'll well, fly I out think... there during summer, and we can like pot together and smoke the same cigar or something. Bro, come on when I have my duplex. It'll place for you to stay. Sick bunk beds. This is, this is what I think you guys should do All every right. week. You should mark two cigars that you both have to smoke. Two cigars a week, you have to smoke the same cigar. And then that way, when you guys get on your podcast, you guys can talk about those two cigars. That's uh, that's pretty fantastic, actually. Well, then that means Dom would be able to... His... Do we have to pay dues to you to, for that idea? Because I, I Not at like all. That. Not at all. Those are, oh, those are free. Cool. But... I did invent Viso Horny back in 1987. <laughs> 87. I was negative one. You were uh, negative. I'll give you the, um, what the fuck? I have, I by the way, I have no La Hair O to pull, by the way. <laughs> well, I feel, I feel like less than a man. You guys got full beards and I'm here. I can't Dude, throw any kind hey, of beard, I might, man. I, I might go bald again. I might shave my head. It's been, it's been like a year and a half since I shaved it. Like that, Dom. You definitely should shave your head first yeah. and foremost. You got a good beard there. Thanks, um, Tyler. I got a question for you. Yes. What do you call a man without a beard? Uh, a player. A woman. Oh, bro. Well, first I wanted to go back to Dom showing us his hair. He said you went bald. You shaved it um, a while ago. Uh, it looks like you're pretty bald right now, though, bro. Yeah, it's uh, genetics. Can't can't do it. That's why I need to shave it again, dude. I was looking back. My uh, sister sent me a picture when I was in college. And I was like, dang. Like, man, I was a lady killer. What happened? But no, I've got a girlfriend. It's okay. 
It's the yeah, time to shave. start going bald. Just shave it. He, yeah. He says he's got one. Well, see, my no, hat no. She says time. she doesn't really like the idea of me shaving my head, but she kind of wasn't super against it. But she doesn't want me to keep the beard. Which oh is no! Like, Get rid of her. Get well, I, I told her, her like I've got a quail hunt coming up next weekend. I can't shave before a quail hunt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, it's cold, so it's just it's good. For yeah, California is yeah. super cold right about now. Practical. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you guys should uh, should have the same shirt, too, when you podcast. Ooh. Tyler has a really it, cool though. watermelon shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, a... yeah, I've seen that. You both should have that watermelon shirt on. That was the best four hours I ever spent. It's a Tommy <laughs> Hill figure. No, it's not Tommy Hill figure. I spent four bucks at, like, Marshall or something. Yeah. That's I got I to gotta, I gotta get some more of those because now they're all way too big for me, so... I went from a four X to a two X. Well, I'm gonna send. Nice. You, I'm gonna send you a rooster shirt, like the one I wore. If you can find one. I'll wear one. I'll wear one at the trade show. Sick. All wow. right, we're rambling, rambling on. Bye, Bye boys. Boys. <laughs> All right, noise, boys. Thanks for coming. All right, man. Miguel. Now, when we ask somebody that you know, tell them that we're actually a legit podcast. You know, we're gonna try to get some people on here. Okay, you guys well, are legit podcast they have a huge budget <laughs> the, the next and person we have on he's going to say oh yeah we've had plenty of people on and you're you're gonna be the first one he mentions we've had miguel <laughs> we've had mo we had uh um, Ty- tyler tyler's in his car we had one can tell we had dom, it looks like dom behind dom it looks like he's got a brown bong well i, I stripped my bed <laughs> now i'm trying to oh oh no that's like a what do you call that it's those giant beer things you can fill up. No, it's not a bong. It's um, uh, He's a teacher. I don't remember. The growler. It's a growler. Growler. It's a growler. Okay. With wings okay. on it. He's got a Greta Van Fleet poster. Rock and roll. And uh, all right. We kept you longer than we should have, Miguel. Uh, we appreciate hey, listen, it. Listen, listen, you guys. Keep rock and rolling. Anything I can do for you guys anytime. Tag me if you post it. I'll share the hell out of it, you guys. You're the best. Awesome. I appreciate it, Miguel. Thank you. Hi, right, boys. Noise, boys, forever. <laughs> oh, shit. See ya. All right, we, All right, are we off? Yeah. yeah.